Welcome to the Driver's Line. I'm Greg. And I'm Jordan. And today, we've got a conversation for you. And we're really excited about today's conversation because it's kicking off a new series, Cars That Represent States. That's right. So we're going to go around to all 50 states and pick out three cities in that state and try to pick out a car that represents each of those cities to give us an overall picture of the car of that state. That's right. So um, we are kicking off this series with one of the most famous states in the United States. Mm -hmm. Florida. Florida, yes. So we all know about Florida Man, so we're going to try to find the Florida car. So stay tuned, and we're going to take you on this journey. That's right. So the three cities that we selected to represent Florida are Orlando, Palm Beach, and Miami. That's right. A nice swath of, you know, Florida right there. So you've got the very touristy Orlando with the theme parks. You've got Miami, which is all about, you know, showcasing wealth and having fun and partying. And then you've got Palm Beach, where you kind of spend the twilight of your life and with your other wealthy friends in Palm Beach. That's so, right. Yes. That's right. So we each picked a car for each of those cities. We did. So I'll go ahead and lead us off. Okay. If that's all right. Sure. So we want to go ahead and start in the north and we'll work our way south. Perfect. Um, so we're going to start up in the far north reaches of Orlando. <laughs> far north. I know. <laughs> So we just Orla- ignored the panhandle. Yeah, so Orlando, Orlando obviously is super, super known for, sure. you know, theme parks, Disney World, oh, yeah. Universal. Um, and so I probably spent a lot more time thinking about this than I should have and just analyzing everything that really means to be a car in Orlando. And I landed on one very specific model. Okay. And then I really just distilled that down to both a brand in line. And so... I finally landed on the Chrysler Pacifica. <laughs> it is the perfect <laughs> Orlando car because yeah, it is. there's nothing but families coming to Disney. So if you're driving in <laughs> to come to Disney from your home, if you're close enough, you're going to have a minivan. You you're going to have a Pacifica. You are. And you know what? If you're flying in from out of state, <laughs> what are you going to get at the Hertz rental counter? It's a Pacifica. Mm. So you are going to go to Orlando. You are going to see these things. They're like cockroaches. They're everywhere. <laughs> Chrysler Pacificas everywhere. You go into that parking lot of Disney, Pacifica, Pacifica, Pacifica. And, you know, you might think, hey, what about a Honda Odyssey? What about a Toyota Sienna? They don't have those at Hertz. <laughs> so you're not going to see them. Yeah, they're selling on their own. So. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's a great pick. Is it? Well, thank you. It's, it's such a great pick. I picked it too. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah. So, well, honestly, uh, what else is there? I mean, yeah. What else is there? I cannot think of another car that has infested Orlando as much. Maybe an Altima, but <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's absolutely the Dodge. It is. Uh, I'm sorry. Not. I was gonna say Dodge Caravan because it used to be that. Right? It could be that too. Yeah. If they yeah. got any of them left over, sure. I know that's true. Yeah. But yeah, the Chrysler Pacific has taken hold of that and. Of course it's going to be a minivan. Yeah. Uh, what other car are you going to rent in Orlando? And when you're driving with all the traffic leading up to Disney World in every single lane, there's a car super safe. That's right. Just look. Everyone. See trust us. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> it's definitely a thing. <laughs> well, I, can't I guess we do get to move on quickly to our next city. Then. <laughs> sure. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving on south, uh, we're going to head to Palm Beach. Oh. We're going to kick back. We're going to relax. Yep. We've aged a bit. And we've made some money. Yeah, we're right. a little That's bit wealthy. All about. We got some money to spend. Yeah. We're obviously blowing our nest egg on our place in Palm Beach. So maybe we got a little bit more to blow on a fancy car. Absolutely. So um, you kind of teed me up very nicely there. Because mm-hmm. what car speaks to the older, wealthy couple, family, a single person? There's no other car that embodies that better to me than the Mercedes SL500. What? It's perfect. It is perfect. That's why I chose it. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> so, it's, I mean, which one did you choose? The SL500, of course. Oh, so you went used. I went used. Oh, I went new. Well, I just, I see, I, when I picture it, like, these old older folks. What were you going to say there? I purchased this. <laughs> um, and they hold on to them. It, it's like, I bought this one car. I, I work so hard for it. I'm going to drive it until the very end when I've put 12,000 miles on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they have, in 20 years. In 20 years. And that thing has had like the best 
most routine oh, service absolutely. at Mercedes of Palm Beach. <laughs> they are on first name basis with their service advisor. He sends them a Christmas present mm -hmm. every year. Which uh, which SL did you pick? So I decided to go new. Okay, so a little bit different at least. Yeah, yeah. And so I went with the SL forty three ah, Mercedes AMG. Okay. So let's say they're all now Mercedes AMG yes, models. Yeah. So they're fancier and sportier, except for the one that I chose because it has the two liter four cylinder <laughs> hybrid setup. But nonetheless, it is still a hundred and eleven thousand dollar car, so it is costing our retirees in Palm Beach a pretty penny. However, but they will get to look nice and sporty in their little SL next to everybody else who decides to you know spend up for the you know fifty five and sixty three. Of course, yeah. Of course, I mean, it's a perfect car for them. It is. It really is. <laughs> well done. Nothing Good better pitch. than a, yeah, nothing better than a two seat convertible for cruising around the streets of, of course, Palm Beach. Of course, with that three-pointed star on the hood. And the hybrid's gonna be pretty quiet too. It won't bother them too much. Yeah, until you decide to hit the Rorty button for that little four-cylinder. They're probably not gonna do that. They're probably not, they don't know where it is. <laughs> they don't know how to work it. Surface advisor's like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so we're gonna end our tour of Florida in the beautiful city of Miami. And this yes. is another one that I probably put way too much thought into. Because to me, Miami is one of two things. Mm. It is a Nissan Altima going 90 miles an hour on I-95 in the left <laughs> lane with his bumper falling off. <laughs> or it is a brand new Lamborghini cruising down the streets of South Beach. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I can see that too. That's, that's a good point. It's one or the other. Yeah. So the problem is to find the perfect Miami car, you have to split the difference. Sure. And so I need something Italian, yeah. but I need something shitty. Maserati <laughs> is perfect. So, people in Miami, what are you laughing about? Like, <laughs> go ahead. People in Miami uh -huh. want to act like they have wealth. Sure. Even if they yeah. don't. Oh, yeah. And so, what is the best car to act like you have wealth when you don't? It is the Maserati <laughs> because you can buy a 2015 Quattroporte. We've talked about this. Which looks like a brand new Quattroporte that you can buy off the lot right now for over $100,000. But you can get that 2015 model for $15,000 and look like you got a six figure car. It's all about it. Mitch. You can cruise around the streets of Miami with your image until that thing breaks down and you will be grooving and cruising in those streets. That's a great pick. Is it? Yeah. I mean, when I, I, I really think your assessment of Miami is very accurate because. The Nissan Altima banging around in the left lane, bumpers are falling off. That's quintessential Miami. Quintessential Miami, yes. But yet so is the Lamborghini. 100%. You see tons of supercars around yeah. Miami. So I, I too, um, kind of thought about that process. But I have to say, like this hit me pretty quickly. <laughs> it was like the first of the three. This was the first one I picked. And your choice was dead on. Because I also picked an <laughs> Estrada. <laughs> So, it really is the intersection of the Nissan Altima and the Lamborghini. <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. If you were to draw a graph, <laughs> this is the intersection of the line. Miami's all about image, impressing other people, partying. Partying. You're not worried about the real things in life. No. Right? Yeah, you're not. And if it gets hit by a hurricane and flooded, it's probably going to be more reliable. Because <laughs> it certainly can't be less. It's... It is the perfect car for Miami. It is the perfect <laughs> Miami car. And honestly, it might even rise to Florida car level. So, but either way, we are very much aligned on our Florida cars. Yes. Or not. We did not share these ahead of time. No. <laughs> mind you. No, I mean, and that speaks to some, for all you Floridians out there. Your cities know who they are. They have strong personalities. You represent yourself. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed our inaugural episode of the cars that represent the states that's florida right. edition that's right let us know what you think of our choices we'd be interested to hear from you yeah since they're exactly the same they are exactly so. the same <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time. thanks for joining us on the driver's line if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a thing